Hey guys, so welcome to the uh, playthrough, video, stream, whatever it's called. Um, basically, just to give you a quick intro, about three weeks ago I decided to start recording some tutorial uh, playthroughs for new players, as I've been playing the game on and off now for about three and a half years. And it's a massive learning curve and I see a lot of new players coming in even after playing the tutorial and what have you this is the game they still have no idea what they're doing um, so I thought I would try and do this just to help you get through it now, this is actually a re-recording of the very first uh, attempt as that was over that was almost two hours long Obviously, it was the first time I'd ever recorded anything, so the quality wasn't the best, the sound wasn't the best. Um, but now I know a little bit more about what I'm doing. I'm going to try and keep this one much shorter. I'll do a lot less talking, but the quality of the video and audio will be better. Um, and hopefully, it will lead you then into the follow-on videos, which... Uh, you'll get more information on how to play the game um, so here we are on the brand new character creation screen um, what you do is that you get to choose one of four factions it doesn't make a, a massive impact to your character it just so it just changes which part of space you start in which career agent you get access to and which initial ships you get access to that's about it and there's role playing you know so but you're not really locked to any one or the other so my advice is just to go with whichever faction you like the look of or the ships so I'll give you a quick overview though Kaldari fly ships that are mainly shield based and missile based okay they do have some hybrid turrets but that's what Kaldari are and they're effectively like a corporation based faction then you've got these chaps which are called Amar these have ships that are mainly energy so lasers and armor so you've got two types two two main types of tanking your ships one is armor and one is shields we'll cover that later but these are them are these are effectively a religious zealot faction who uh, enslave people then you've got the Galente these are a faction that are mainly hybrid weapons hybrid turret weapons and armor tanked these are libertarians and you've finally got the Minmatar these guys mainly run auto cannons stroke artillery and shield based but they're a little bit more flexible in their armor so they do have some armor based as well these guys are the freedom fighters who have broken away from enslavement under the amarians so that's who these guys are. I am going to go with Kaldari. So there we go. This again doesn't make any difference. So just choose whoever you want. I'm just going to choose this guy. Customize appearance. I'm not really bothered about this. Uh, Let's have a look at him from a distance. 
that suits me fine i do not care you guys can spend a lot of time doing all sorts of customization it's very very flexible um i i'm not going to waste time on that so let's just next now you get to choose a school you always have to be in a, in a corporation when you start you're in an npc corporation one of these three here afterwards you can go out and join a player corporation or make your own corporation but every time you leave a corporation either your own or player corporation you will be get put back in your original npc corp i don't think again it makes a lot of difference um you've got this one which is combat this one which is exploration science and trade and this one is industry you know it might have it might give you a slight difference in starting skills but i'm just going to go with this because just in case it does you know the pilot skills are always good but you can choose whatever you want um and then you've got to choose a name it has to be a unique name uh, because there's only one server in this game i will go with Professor Pod Popper. Let's see if that works. Ah, I pressed the wrong button then, didn't I? Try again. Professor Pod Popper. And that'll do me because it says that's okay. So that's my name. There we go. Would you like to begin the tutorial? Yes, this is just to play it through for you guys. New Eden, a universe brimming with possibility and rife with adventure. Only the most intrepid capsuleers can conquer its many wonders. Do you have what it takes to become one with a machine? To explore the far reaches of space, carving out a name for yourself among the stars? To become a titan of industry? Amassing wealth, power, and prestige as you rise above your rivals. Or to prove your worth in combat, cementing new alliances and vanquishing your foes on your path to glory. For the rare few, immortality awaits. With Air's Capsuleer Training Program, you become the architect of your own destiny. Captain, I am Aura, your AI companion. I am here to help you find your way through New Eden. Welcome to the first day of your new life as a Capsuleer. I am now transferring your pod into a ship, provided by air as part of your Capsule. An unidentified communicator. Vectoring escape route. Evacuation sequence initiated. Station hull integrity compromised. Sorry guys, my cat's jumped up on the desk. Captain, this I'm cloning facility she was doesn't stand on any buttons. Could be inserted into a ship. I initiated our evacuation sequence before we reached the hangar to avoid certain death. No need to thank me. Right, so this this is Aura. She's for the tutorial purposes. She interrupts and talks quite a lot. 
Um, I probably won't talk a great deal during this, um, just to get through it, and so you can hear what she's got to say. Um, so let's just get through it. This baptism by fire is certainly not what Air had planned for your first day in a pod. Rest assured, I am here to help. I've had worse day first days in work. I'm unable to identify our attackers, but they are not currently targeting our capsule. This gives us time to locate a ship. Your pod may be able to fly through space, but, like all capsules, it is unarmed. A proper ship comes with proper weaponry. We must scan the debris for a space-worthy vessel. Right, guys, so... Camera in this is as you would expect. Contr center mouse, scroll in and out. You know, and to look around, hold the left mouse button and now, let's get a better rotate look at your mouse. I've never used any of that nonsense. Ah, there is a ship still capable of flight. An Astero, no less. A fine ship indeed. Right, so let's just click on it. I have highlighted the navigation section of your display. Use it to approach the ship. Right, let's go. Let's click on that. When you get out of the tutorial, you'll learn much better ways of navigating than just using these this navigation bar. Board the Astero now. Our shields took significant damage in the attack. So, see this guys? The ship's got three layers to it. Shield, armour and hull. Shield regenerates itself. Armour doesn't regenerate, you need special modules. Hull doesn't regenerate, needs special modules. If you burn through all three of those, then your ship explodes and you'll be left in your pod in the middle of space. Just so you know, there are two two main ways of tanking your ship. You either do shield or, or, or armor. Hull is available, but it's a very special case. Uh, and yet you, you don't often dual tank, which is a mistake new players make. So let's just... The armor is also in need of repair. And then... I believe the appropriate idiom for this situation is, we're screwed. Fortunately, the cavalry has arrived. Ships bearing air transponders are approaching our location. Alan Ferris, Commander of Air Security. All ships evacuating this cloning facility are advised to rendezvous at emergency coordinates. Several thousand civilians appear to have survived the attack. Let us make haste and join the fleet Commander Ferris is organizing. Your overview will display the ships in your vicinity. This is the overview, one of the most important pieces of your head-up display. It shows you all sorts of useful information. Um, you know, so you'll see a lot of that. You never close that unless you're taking a space selfie. Um, so let's just uh, do what she wants. That's approach that. This, by the way, is your ship's battery effectively. Certain things. Captain, your vessel looks like it's seen better days. I'll repair you once you're in range. Certain things deplete that. So you have to manage your battery because if it's depleted, those things... Commander Ferris, were you able to determine the identity of our attackers? Won't run. Negative aura. Their transponders were cloaked and their hulls lacked any identifying information. I'd wager this was an act of corporate espionage turned violent. There are a lot of people in New Eden who want to get their hands on its technology, whatever the cost. As you can see, that's our shields being repaired. 
Anything that's affecting us. Thanks to Commander Ferris's repairs, our ship is almost as good as new. Appears there. At his command, we will proceed to the emergency coordinates. All ships enter warp formation. Those are battleships. That big thing there is a cargo ship. So players use that to transport things across the game. designated emergency evacuation zone. We'll be safe here while we regroup. A spot well chosen. This location's cosmic abnormalities will mask our warp signatures from detection. But our appreciation of New Eden's natural wonders will have to wait. Captain, I could use your help. My sensors are picking up a strange signal nearby, but my forces are stretched thin defending the civilian fleet. The cosmic storm likes to play with our sensors, so it could be nothing. But after that attack, I'm not taking any chances. So, just click that, and then click approach. By the way, look at the size difference between us and a, and a battleship. See the size difference between us. Initiating scan of unidentified signal. And a transport as well. Captain, hostiles inbound. That's blue because it's friendly. We have to defend friendly. those unarmed civilian transports. All ships equipped for combat form up around me. My sensors indicate that these are the same ships that attacked the cloning facility. A ship that's uh, hostile shows up in your overview as red. Several frigates are breaking away from the pack. They're targeting those civilian ships. This will be your first combat experience as a capsuleer. Time to show these hostiles what you're truly made of. Orbit the frigate first. Right, so we have to lock onto it. And then press the orbit. We're too far away, Captain. Thankfully, our ship is equipped with a module that will boost our speed. Activate the afterburner module highlighted on your display. My database of ancient idioms contains a phrase appropriate to our situation. Drive it like you stole it. So just uh, click on that. We're now within range. Lock your target. So press, press that to lock a target. Target lock confirmed. Time to hit them where it hurts. Now, you can see this is Link. If your weapons are the same, you can link them together. And then you only have to press it once. So, we'll just hit the mouse button now for that. That's it, Captain. Let them have it. This is... The blue is our damage, the red is the damage that we're taking. Another hostile ship incoming. A cruiser this time. It's larger and better armed than those frigates. What an exhilarating way to test your combat abilities. That cruiser is traveling fast. At its current speed, it will reach the civilian transports before we do. 
Use your stasis webifier to slow them down. I will walk you through the process of activating the module. First, orbit the cruiser. So basically see that, so select it in the overview, so you can also select it there. Then you press the orbit, because that's what it wants us to do. We've got our afterburner running, so we're approaching it. Now that that's appeared, we're in range of locking distance, so we can lock it. To ensure success... This is our Webify, you can see that it works when we get in uh, within 10 kilometers. Basically what this is used for is to slow ships down. They're trapped in our web, Captain. Eliminate them. And then, now that it's in within range of our guns, we just hit that and we'll shoot it. There is The reason you slow ships down is it makes it easier to hit them. There is something in the game called angular velocity. With, so in conjunction with tracking speed and gun size etc. That impacts the calculation of your chance to hit. So you can see that's him, we're locked onto him, our guns are firing on him and the webbit is locked onto him. And you can see that we're being healed by Bailey. If in there you see that that's acting on us, you can see the little icon there. Good job, Captain. You've got potential. Shit. Two battleships breaking away from the enemy fleet. They're stopping the last civilian transport from warping away. Watch your six, Captain. They're bigger and badder than anything you've fought before. Captain, we can use electronic countermeasures, ECM, to break the battleship's lock on the civilian transport. Doing so means the battleship will be able to target only one thing. Us. There is no other way to save those civilians. They are not capsuleers like you. Their deaths will be final. Yours will be a learning experience. So, they want us to lock this one, select it, press the orbit. We'll do what we can to keep the other hostiles off your back, Captain. Focus on your target. Lock it because we're in range. Once we deploy the ECM, the battleship will begin firing upon us. This is what you call... Remember, you will have a fresh clone waiting for you once your current body is violently destroyed. Engage the ECM now. Electronic countermeasures. That's it. The final group of civilians has escaped. You've done good, Captain. It's used to... We're taking heavy fire, Commander Ferris. Once our ship is destroyed, the pod will soon follow. According to my calculations, our destruction is 99.99%. See, like I said, so. now we're being webbed and warped. Actually, it says we're being webbed by one battleship and warped, but warped, scrambled. It means we can't walk away. Damn it. These bastards have me pinned down. And now you can see we're about to die because we're going to get to Hull. There's nothing you can do, this is a scripted event. You can see that we don't do much damage to a battleship. Now you can see we're being you warped well by today, two. Captain. And this webbed by two. Death. Luckily for you, it as you can not be see, lost. you could see in there as well the icons. You are a capsilia. For you. Death is not an end. It is simply the beginning of a new adventure. As always, I will see you on the other side. So when your ship gets destroyed, you end up in space in your pod. If that gets destroyed, Welcome back to the world die. of the living, Captain. I hope your death was not too uncomfortable. Your neural data has been transferred to a fresh clone body. But before you stretch your new legs, someone very important would like to meet you. When you die in space, you wake up in your space station that you've set as your home. 
each station and you're given a new body, but your ship is, is destroyed. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Vesper Calatrix, Air's Vice President of Operations. Commander Ferris spoke highly of your courage under fire. You went out with quite the bang. But from what he tells me, you deserve more than just our thanks. In fact, we have some credits waiting for you. The attack on the cloning facility interrupted your integration into AIR's career program. We've re-established your connection to the program, and you've already earned a reward. You can access the AIR career program via your Neocom. This is called your Neocom. It's always at the side when you're in your uh, station. It gives you all sorts of access to all different menus and stuff like that. Welcome to the program, where Capsuleers can forge their own path through New Eden while earning rewards for their progress. Taking part in your first combat and experiencing your first ship loss have already earned you some interstellar credits, aka ISK. You can claim it now. The rewards you just claimed are available to redeem. Exit the program to proceed. The career agent, the career air career program is something new. It didn't exist when I first started playing. It's something to help new players get into the game. Introduces the four different types of, I could say, careers within the game. Uh, it helps you collect points as you do the activities within these things, which gives you skill points, which you'll find out more about later, um, and it gives you sort of a pathway of what to do once you get out of the tutorial as well like follow the activities to earn the rewards and the skill points any rewards you get that can be claimed going here your redeemable area you can see there's loads of stuff in here because this is actually created on another character you get three characters on an account so but if you're starting a brand new one you'll just see whatever is for your one character in there. View your redeem items to see your newly awarded ISK. From here, you can redeem your ISK directly into your wallet. If we do this now to date added, it'll probably be... There you go, that's what we've got. So we'll just make sure we collect, select those two and redeem to current station. The Air Career Program will be there whenever you want to set yourself a goal or unlock more rewards. For now, you may close the window so that we can continue. As your last ship was destroyed in a blaze of glory, Air would like to provide you with a new one. I will enable your station services panel so that you may board the ship provided to you by Air. Try not to blow this one up so quickly, but if you do, you can acquire a new Corvette at any station. So this is a question that most rookies ask all the time. I'm blown up in space, what do I do? If you're still in your pod, you just fly to the nearest space station, and then you come onto this right hand side, and you press board my Corvette, and then you get given a new Corvette. It's, it's a junk ship, but at least your next adventure will hopefully prove less explosive you can start we have again a lead on the attack on the cloning facility and we want you to follow up on it right so this has been running for 30 minutes now so i'm gonna pause the recording here because i'm gonna keep them to 30 minute slots and as we're about to embark on the next mission um we'll just use this as a good cutoff point and start again so um i'll see you in part 1b all right guys thanks very much cheers bye bye